Uh, the following examination is, is a detailed study of the Catholic Lutheran Joint Declaration and Justification. This declaration has caused much controversy within so-called traditionalist circles. The majority of state of contest tend to misunderstand this declaration and distort just what it's saying. The main problem doesn't always stem from a willingness to mislead people deliberately, but rather out of ignorance to theology as a whole. Theology is important, and it's disappointing that its realm is so limited within state of contism. We'll be particularly dealing with an article put out by the Diamond Brothers. And on the right-hand side, you can download the PDF, which is a complete refutation of the article that the Diamond Brothers have put out. There's no, there's no way in ten minutes that I have enough time to completely refute everything. But the PDF goes even more in-depth, covers Aladdin, covers some Greek and biblical passages that are relevant, and completely shows how uh, these individuals are misrepresenting what the document is saying. And sadly so, it comes out evident, uh, ever so evident in the, in the examination. Download uh, on the right-hand side. We hope uh, you actually stop and read the declaration before you read any of these. Read the declaration itself. Um, don't read an examination by a, a set of a contest uh, cult group or, uh, or by myself. Uh, read the document itself before reading anything. Then you can see uh, who is presenting it in, uh, in its uh, logical uh, conclusion that comes from it or who is uh, misrepresenting it. Anyhow, the Diamond Brothers begin by saying that Lutherans on the doctrine of justification that the idea that Catholics could agree to, a, to, the, to anything in this declaration should strike a Catholic as absurd because Catholics are required to believe in the dogmatic teaching of the Council of Trent while Lutherans reject the dogmatic teaching of Trent. Well, the problem with this approach is the assertion that all Lutherans are united on the issue of justification. Further widening the problem is the assertion that Catholics are compromised in the teachings of Trent, and we will see as we go forth that uh, both are uh, incorrect. The joint declaration with the Lutherans on the doctrine of justification, this is what the diamonds say, is so heretical that there are almost no words to describe it. It completely repudiates Trent. Well, if we examine the Declaration, it is clear when it says that justification was regarded as the crux of all the disputes and resulted in the mutual doctrinal condemnations, both in the Lutheran Confessions and by the Roman Catholic Church's Council of Trent. These condemnations are still operative today and thus have a church-dividing effect. Well, if this joint declaration were repudiating Trent, the preamble would have no need to let us know that the condemnations are still operative to this very day. They're still operative. So is what is being said here heretical? Absolutely not. In fact, the Joint Declaration says, The present Joint Declaration has this intention, namely, to show that on the basis of their dialogue, the subscribing Lutheran churches and the Roman Catholic Church are now able to articulate a common understanding of our justification by God's grace through faith in Christ. It does not cover all that either church teaches about justification. It does encompass a consensus on basic truths of the doctrine of justification, and it shows that the remaining differences in its explication are no longer the occasion for, occasion for doctrinal condemnations. As we can clearly see, a common understanding on the biblical and historical teaching of sola gratia is what is being spoken about in this particular part of the declarations. Declaration. Had the Diamond Brothers quoted the context of this passage of the Declaration, we'd see what is being spoken about in regards to the realm of justification. As this Declaration itself tells us, certain facets of justification are no longer the occasion for condemnation, whereas others are. The teaching of Sola Gratia is a biblical and historical teaching, and as such, this particular group of Lutherans, this particular group, has come to an agreement on this, as well as other levels of the biblical and traditional truths of justification. justification. What we will find as we continue along is a pattern that is quite obvious. The state of a contest have taken portions of the joint declaration and have completely taken them out of context and jumped to logical conclusions. The diamonds say that none of the teachings of the Lutherans in the joint declaration is condemned by Trent, without pointing out what specific teachings are being agreed upon in this section. If you read the context in its totality, we can see that thus the doctrinal condemnations of the 16th century insofar as they relate to the doctrine of justification appear in a new light. The teachings of the Lutheran churches presented in this declaration does not fall under the condemnations of Trent. Nothing is thereby taken away from the seriousness of the condemnations rela related to the doctrine of justification. Some were, n were, not, were not simply pointless. 
uh, they remain for us salutary warnings to which we must attend in our teaching and practice. Section 42 clearly affirms that the condemnations of the erroneous theology within Lutheranism is still serious and should still be realized as existing in our day and age. If this declaration were abandoned in the teachings of Trent, we wouldn't be told about the condemnations still in force. There's nothing within, within this declaration that compromises Catholic teaching in any way whatsoever. As is clearly shown, this group of Lutherans do not hold to faith alone in the intellectual ascent formulation that Trent fiercely condemned. Read carefully. The Lutheran position as put forth in the 16th century is different from that that is held by this particular group of Lutherans. If the position was the same, then it would be impossible to come to an agreement on this. The remaining condemnations are still there, as we have examined. The condemnations that are no longer in existence are those where both sides have reached a mutual agreement, as can be seen from the very document itself. The understanding of the doctrine of justification set forth in this declaration shows that a consensus in basic truths of the doctrine of justification exists between Lutherans and Catholics. In light of this consensus, the remaining differences of language Theological elaboration and emphasis in the understanding of justification described in paragraphs 18 and 39 are acceptable. Therefore, the Lutheran and the Catholic explications of justification are in their difference open to one another and do not destroy the consensus regarding the basic truths. There is a consensus, but there are still remaining differences. The differences, as the Declaration tells us, do not destroy the consensus if the Diamond Brothers could show us one area of the Joint Declaration that is notifying us that it is denying Trent, then they would have a case. It would also be sufficient if the Diamonds could show us flawed and Protestant theology that has been adopted from this decree. Shouldn't be too hard. Throughout the document, Trent is constantly hearkened to. If Trent was being tossed out the window as a state of a contest would have you believe, we'd find it difficult to read certain sections which invoke just what Trent said. For an individual that understands Catholic theology and Protestant theology, to say sola fide is acceptable based on Catholic principles and not those that Trent condemned is quite acceptable. For the Diamond Brothers, anything that seems like it's of shock value should then be adopted. Unfortunately, the Joint Declaration is professing a belief in a formula that is not condemned by Trent. In order to understand just what it was that Trent condemned, we must examine what Trent says on this very topic. Canon 9, Decree and Justification from Trent. If anyone says that the sinner is justified by faith alone, so that thus he understands nothing else is required to cooperate in order to obtain the grace of justification, and that it is not in any way necessary that he be prepared and disposed by the action of his own will. Let him be anathema. An examination of the Latin will help iron this out for us even better. In reference to the anathema, it is corresponding to ita ut intelligat. In this context, the Latin intelligat means a certain type of feeling. So this is the type of faith alone that is being spoken out against by Trent. As we will soon see, this is not the formula for faith alone that the document endorses. In the joint declaration, we read what type of faith is being spoken of. Justifying faith includes hope in God and love for Him. Such a faith is active in love, agape, and thus the Christian cannot and should not remain without works. This is the type of faith that is being spoken of here. A true faith, a faith that works itself out through love. It is a well-known fact that this joint agreement was years in the making. It didn't just sprout up in the late 90s and get signed. Long before it was formulated, the church's scholars spoke of a type of faith alone that was acceptable. The church fathers spoke of faith alone that was acceptable. It was a type of faith crystallized in 1 Corinthians 13.13 13, 13, 13, that is acceptable. This is the type of faith acceptable. So faith, hope, and love remain, these three, but the greatest of these is love. As the Lutheran World Federation has clearly defined, faith is tantamount to faith, hope, and love, which is all consonant with Catholic theology. So in this case, faith alone would be acceptable because it's not an intellectual type of faith that Trent slammed down upon.